channel to me Nicole um, if you watch my last video you know that we took off uh, an old set of acrylic nails showed you many tools and explained them um, how they were used and everything like that this video we are going to be going over how I get ready for a new set or and or whatever how I protect my nails just to go uh, about living my best life so some of the things we're going to be using today um, are cuticle pushers so let's get that out we got cuticle pushers we got cuticle nippers we have a manicure set just a real simple one you can get this um, off of Amazon or Wish. You can pick up something similar to this at any beauty supply store or nail supply store. Uh, relatively cheap. If you don't want to get the whole set for a Russian manicure, you can just pick up the bits that you'll think you're going to need the most. Uh, we have some cuticle softener, cuticle remover. This is the brand I use. Um, it's a pretty popular brand. You can find it in most places. Maybe not in a bottle this big. Um, but it's relatively cheap. Um, especially if you get the smaller bottle. So uh, maybe look into something like this. Um, if you don't want to spend the money on a cuticle remover. Just some regular dish soap and warm water. You can soak your nails. Push your cuticles back. That will soften them up. Uh, we're going to be using cuticle oil. Now this is a cuticle oil that I actually made on my own it's uh vitamin e jojoba oil vitamin e jojoba oil and rose hip oil just because i like the smell and then we have a uh, base coat this is marquette which is a reasonably priced beer brand i don't know if you can see that and that's the base coat and then we have marquette top coat we also have um, orange wood stick and a 120 there we go 120 200 uh, nail file this is one of the softest nail files you can get I'm sure if you search you can find um, something softer but this is the softest one that's readily available that you can really find anywhere um, and we also have some barber's batting or beautician's batting this is just what I use instead of cotton um, but you can use anything you can use cotton balls or makeup remover pads and then we have acetone um, it doesn't say acetone but this is my acetone bottle that's what we use <coughs> we also have some uh, IBD hard gel it's uh, LED UV we have a couple different nail lights that uh, we'll get into later and a couple different ways of applying the hard gel that might be a little easier for everybody concerned and we have our um, e-file so how we're going to start this is um, after you've taken your acrylic nails off or gel nails or whatever product you had on your hands you're going to go ahead and wash your hands really well you're going to scrub them with some warm soapy water and then you're going to come back and use your uh, cuticle remover now if you bite your nails if you're just doing this um, just to do a manicure it's it's really the same process just going to go ahead and kind of paint that cuticle remover over your over your nails we'll just do the one hand for now you're going to let it sit for a minute and then you're going to take your cuticle pusher um, there are a lot of styles of cuticle pushers um, this is kind of one of the ones I prefer it's got the longer rounded edge and then it has a beveled blade type edge to get 
the stuff that's really stuck on there off. Um, you also have the ones that are connected to a nail pincher. So it kind of looks like that. Um, this edge isn't really beveled and it's not really sharp. Um, and it has a nail pincher on the end. So it's kind of a, a two-in-one. So if you want to invest your money, um, these are, depending on how hard you want to look, these are roughly the same price if you're just buying it uh, one piece at a time. So now that, that cut the cuticle remover has sat, we're going to go ahead and push those cuticles back. Now because I took my nails off yesterday, um, I do have a coating on there of just uh, gel base coat but I didn't go all the way down to the edge so um, I don't like doing that unless I've had the time to do uh, proper cuticle care so we're gonna go ahead and gently push our cuticles back with the cuticle pusher If you're doing this on a natural nail um, or you're doing this at the time of an infill, um, make sure you're not pushing product under that nail because that can happen, especially if you're just going to do this step and skip the rest. You want to make sure you're not putting product under, under that nail. it just it can be uncomfortable and if you if it gets lodged under there too well you go to pick at it you're going to pick that cuticle up and you can um, damage your hand so now that the cuticle is pushed back um, we're going to go ahead you can either scrape it scrape the remnants off of um, any cuticle that was lifted just to to get the big pieces out and then this will also help catch if you have some product left on your hand that might have come up while you were doing um, your cuticle pushing this will kind of help get it out before it dries in there and settles But none of these things you want to do too hard either. Um, if you do anything too hard, it, you can damage your nails or you can damage your cuticle area. And if you do it too hard and too often, you can actually deform your nail bed. So we don't want that. You don't want to sit there, I know some people like to pick, um, but you don't want to really sit there and pick at, at anything too much. <coughs> so then we're going to get our, it looks like a little flame bit. This kit has several different bits, if you can see it. Um, we've got a very, this one is a very small ball bit, that's for getting the dried cuticle that lifts up, that's for kind of taking it off. It's got a flat edge barrel bit, it's for smoothing out the natural nail and you can, and you can get right up to the cuticle with that one. And the rounded bit also is this one right here. It's really good for, um getting right on that cuticle and getting not going under it but really you can get this the cuticle off the edge of the finger here you can it's soft enough you can go around your skin and then if you have calluses on the side of your finger um, this is good for grinding them down too um, we have another large bit 
barrel bit here and then we have two different flame bits one's a little bit longer one's a little bit shorter and stouter they they're basically used for the same thing um, just separating the overgrown cuticle or anything stuck on your nail bed just getting it up and out and then you have um, these two needle type oops, sorry you have these two needle type bits that's for going I've seen a lot of people go underneath their cuticles and get that or under the sides um, of their nail here and here uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it, um, just because you can def, again, a lot of the things that, that people do can deform that nail bed, um, or it can cause your, your cuticles to grow thicker and wider because it's trying to protect your natural nail from the damage you're doing to it. So, um, depending on what your cuticles look like. I always start with these two bits, um, but if you have thin skin or over thick overgrown cuticles that are going to be painful or that were painful or stubborn when you tried to push them back, I would start with this bit or this bit. So the flat head cone and then the rounded head cone I would start with just to get the, that stuff up, to get the cuticle separated from the nails. And you're going to see that a lot in people who are rough with their hands. So that do kind of rougher manual label, labor, that pick their nails, or that bite their nails. They have those overgrown cuticles. So I'm just going to take the short, stout bit. And go ahead and put it in our e-file. Make sure it's in there correctly. Move everything else out of the way. Now we're going to turn our e file on. Um, 20. Now I choose tw the speed 20 for a lot of things. Um, only because it's going fast enough to really do a good job, but not, not enough to hurt you. So you don't ever want to lead with that tip either, because that tip can be kind of sharp. Um, and one wrong move and you're going to dig into your, you're going to drill right into your nail. So you want to lead with the body of it and then pull. You could end with that edge, but you can't lead with it. Um, you want to go low and slow, but you always want to keep it moving and you don't really need to apply pressure. Go ahead and get that done. Now you can obviously do a more involved Russian style manicure um, where you go through all of the bits and use every single one. I just choose not to do that. Um, because you never know how much is too much to do. And if you do your nails a lot or you have thin nails, you, you don't want to over file it. Okay, so we're just going over and making sure everything is up and out of that cuticle. Then we're going to take the batting and look and make sure we don't have any chunks left, anything sticking up. Make sure any product is up and away from that cuticle. This actually is the easy, easiest part of any manicure. This one's still missing a little bit. Um, is that cuticle area doesn't take much. But you do want to be sh make sure that you're being as gentle as possible. Let me go through this again. Okay. 
again there is is no one bit that you want to keep using um, you, you want to be very careful and very gentle with your nails and then when you're done using any of your stuff make sure you clean it off um, this is just how I do it because with the diamond bits um, they get gummed up really easy so you just want to make sure you're taking care of them all I do is give a quick pump of my acetone bottle dip it in there and then with most manicure kits you get this little brush it's supposed to be so you can go around and brush off the edge of your nail I just use it to clean my bits it works keeps my bits clean all right so now that that is done the cuticle area is done you want to take the shine off the natural nail just in preparation for um, any application you might be wanting to do so I didn't think I needed to use my cuticle nippers but I do see a spot that's gonna bother me if I don't so these are just your basic cuticle nippers when you look for them when you go to the store you want to check the thickness of the edge it shouldn't be too thick nor too thin but you do want them to meet when they meet they should you know form a really good edge of their own how easy it is for you guys to see that so you're gonna go and you are going to gently, I don't know if you can see that spot, very gently clip only the white part that's sticking up. Because um, again, if you do anything too much, your body is going to try and protect itself. And your cuticles are going to grow thicker and they're going to grow over that natural nail and then you're just going to have a, re a repeating problem so just make sure you're taking it easy put those aside <coughs> now before I do cuticle care or get next or get um, ready to do my next set of nails by roughing up that nail I always make sure I have some product on my natural nail right now I have the base coat from Marquette just a couple just enough that I can treat it like I would my natural nail you want to be able to take the shine off of it and rough it up um, just for application of new product. Okay, I actually turn this down to an 18. So you can go along that cuticle edge and you'll see that this is actually bringing up um, just a bit of the other cuticles. And then you're going to rough up. Now some people like doing this with a sanding band with just a normal sanding band that everybody uses um, I actually prefer to do it with this only because I do have other things on my nails and this seems to work better for that and it's it's more gentle it's gentler it's made you know obviously to use on the natural nail so it's going to be very very soft very very gentle you're just going to go finger by finger not staying in one spot too long um, and just you know kind of roughing it up to 
your liking. You may, you know, those those various spots that that didn't quite get all the shine off, that may bother you. Um, and if it does, just go back and file that. But you want to make sure that you're not damaging that base, that base coat. Now I put this on and rough it up, me personally, for every kind of application I'm going to be doing. Um, if I'm doing a protective application because I'm not going to be doing my nails for a little while, um, or if I'm uh, just getting it ready so I can apply acrylics or other gels, um, I always this is the process I always follow. Only because I it protects my natural nail for one, and then two, it, I I feel I've noticed that it makes any product I put on my nails last a little bit longer, whether it be regular polish, gel polish, acrylic, other gel, whatever I put on there, just lasts longer when I do it like this. I notice less lifting. So, sorry, I'm not doing anything. Um, my earbud is falling out. So now we're going to get to the protective application. Um, I use I use gel. You could also use um, if you don't have gel, you don't have a light, or you just don't like it. Um, you can use uh, fiberglass resin which I don't have on hand right now. Um, you can use regular nail polish. Um, I always do the two in one, so you can do two coats of base coat, clear, clear base coat, and then one coat of regular uh, clear top coat. Make sure they're dry in between applications and you should be good. Um, I like gel just because it's a little stronger. Um, but everybody has their own preference. So now we are going to look at nail lamps. Now if space is an issue and price is an issue, they have these little nail lamps. I've had this nail lamp forever. It's a little 6 watt. Works like a charm. If you're, you find a nail is chipping, oh, and it's, it's USB, so you can use your charger for, uh, phone head to do this. A little battery pack. Um, it's just a little 6 watt lamp. Just three little LED lights. You can do one nail at a time or you can actually do all your nails at a time <laughs> if you hold it just right. But you gotta be careful because sometimes that pinky doesn't I don't want to do it. This I really only pull out if I'm in a rush and I don't want to pull all of my stuff out. And then you have a regular sized nail lamp. So this is a, what is it? Bolison? Bolison? Um, this is an 84 watt light. So it's a pretty strong light. It's got the sensors in it and the double time which means it starts off low and then gets brighter as it goes along um, just to kind of head off any of those heat spikes and then it's got the three timers what is it 10 seconds 30 seconds and 60 seconds
we're going to be using this today. So I'm just going to over explain everything because that's what I do. If you're going to be using um, hard gel to protect your nail but not building it out, I would recommend using a small brush. Just any brush really, just a small one. They do have specialty gel brushes that you can buy. Any art brush is fine. Now if you want to do, I noticed Builder in a Bottle has become very popular. Um, or there's another application I saw where the gel is in a bottle, the hard gel is in a bottle and you, you squeeze it out over your nail. But this is something people have been doing forever. I've been doing my nails for a very long time. So the, the new things coming out, I can kind of look at and go, hey, that's not how it was done. I'm, new inventions are an amazing thing, and I am just in awe at some of the stuff they're coming out with. But um, it's been going on, and kind of here's how. So... To protect your natural nail, you can either do the two coats of base coat, one coat of top coat, just to get rid of that tacky layer if you have no white. You could do hard gel. We're going to get into that in just a second. Just IBD hard gel. And then I actually have gel in this bottle just a little black bottle. I've had this thing, I don't even know how long, forever. I've had this thing forever. You can see some of it is actually coming out. Um, what you want to do to fill a bottle like this, I don't even know how you would go about searching for a bottle like this. Um, I don't know, you would have to check on Amazon. Um, I I don't even remember where I got this. Probably Walmart or something. But it's it comes in handy if you don't have time, or um, your application isn't the smoothest. This is a really great thing to kind of just put on and pull down. I'm lost. Okay. So we've roughed up our nails, our cuticles are clean. We're going to take some acetone or rubbing alcohol or whatever you want to do. And we're going to wipe those nails off just to make sure they're dust free, make sure there's no lint on them. So the first one is the base coat. Take it and kind of, I make sure my brush is bent when I scrub it back to the cuticle. So take it, bend it, scrub it back, pull. Take it, bend it, scrub it back, pull, and then do the same thing over here. You want to make sure you're really bending that brush, pushing the product back and pulling out. And be careful for those cuticles, the last thing you want is gel hardened up in there. Just a quick, just a quick flash cure will, will be fine while you're still painting. And you want to make sure that you have enough on your brush. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you want to take it. I make sure I really bend that brush. I don't. You don't do two sides because then you're going to get streaky. But take it, bend it, push it back, pull out. Other side, take it, bend it, push it back, pull out. And then if you notice it's streaky, you can actually just smooth it out. 
or you can leave it outside the lamp for a while just hold it level make sure you're cleaning off the cuticles and then stick it in so that's two base coat one top to get rid of the sticky now this is if you're if you're trying to grow your natural nails um, the the two base one top is is perfect if you have if you don't have thin nails if you have pretty decent healthy nails um, this is perfect as just a little added layer of strength and it'll help you grow your nails out but you got to keep it up um, you're as you go around doing the things you normally would do that product wears away and you have to make sure you keep your nail shaped um, make sure you're not your nail isn't getting yellow just wipe one side off and then bend it back push and pull push And that push-pull method works really, really well to really get up to that cuticle, but not on it. Because any any time you put gel on your hands, um, you have to be careful with that first layer. Because gel wants to go where gel has been. So, you you got to really be careful where you're putting it. But yeah, this will be thick enough and add enough strength just to um, go about, you know, doing whatever you're doing. As long as you're not too rough on it. Okay, that should be good. Just a quick flash cure. This stuff doesn't take long. It's 30 seconds, but I usually try to do... Um, 45 seconds to a minute. So now we go on to the gel in a bottle. You can, um, you can buy actually these bottles or there you can find amber bottles at your nail supply store. I don't know if they sell it at Sally's, but if you look, um, wherever you're located, you look for a nail supply store. Um, they'll sell bottles like this, or they'll sell the amber bottles that you can put gel in. Um, and you can kind of do your own builder in a bottle. All you need is that, and then some gel, gel thinning solution, gel polish thinner. So here we have this. I actually had a, it, you can find very small funnels. Or you can make a small funnel out of aluminum foil stick it in here and make sure your gel is warmed up stick it in a bottle of hot water or something like that stir it up till it's like a honey type consistency and then you can just pour it in here and this is also great for if you want to you know put stones on you can just dab it put the stone on dab it Put the stone on it's easier for me that's how I've been doing my stones kind of forever so with this all you're gonna do is take it and you really whatever you're doing you don't want to apply too much so take it apply it and then just take it from side to side just rub it you don't have to press too hard Make sure you're getting right next to that cuticle, but not on it. If you do get on your cuticle, wipe it off before you cure it. Really take a look at that nail and make sure you're not curing product onto your cuticle. You can either wipe it off with your nail or you can dip your brush in acetone or alcohol and wipe that off hold your nail upside down just for a little bit so it stays away from that cuticle go. 
And this is good if you have thinner nails. If you do your nails a lot or you just have thin nails. Um, this is good. You can keep it on and still protect that nail. It just gives a protective layer to the nail. A sturdy or protective layer. It'll help grow your nails out as long as you're not banging it too hard. And then the, what's in here is just the IBD. So it's no, it's not any fancy gel, anything like that. It's just the IBD. And I'm going to keep this going for a minute, an actual minute this time. Alright, so that's done. And then you can either wipe that tacky layer off, or if you're worried about staining or yellowing, just add a top coat. And then with this method also, um, either this method or just brushing the, um, okay, so the camera cut off. We were, um, going over how to, to pinch the nail. So to pinch your nail, I think we had our hand in for about 15 seconds. Go ahead, do it for another 15, um, any medium you use you're gonna feel a heat spike whether it's um, base gel coat hard gel or gel polish you're gonna feel a heat spike when that heat spike subsides um, that's usually the best time to pinch your nail so go ahead and pinch it and then re-cure um, for about 10 seconds or so And then if you're going to apply more product, if your nail wasn't thick enough for your liking, or um, you go over it with, um, you know, uh, another layer of, of, of hard gel, repinch it. Because when things cure, they, they want to open up. So, if... If you pinch it, cured it until it was done, and you're not going to add anything else except for maybe a top coat, you should be fine. Um, but if you don't like the thickness of it, if it's too thin for you, you don't feel like it's going to hold up, and you add more, go through the same process. Cure it for about 15 to 25 mm -hmm. seconds, and then repinch and, and pop it in the lamp. And you'll get a slight curve to the nail. It'll push the, the sides in. Uh, but as you continue to do that, as you continue to, like, through fills um, or, or product application, the more you pinch your nail, the, 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 the more you train it to grow into that C curve. So eventually, you won't have to really worry about it. It'll just happen. So now that that's done, we are going to do our last nail. And then I, I know I was explaining to, you know, gently float and, you know, don't, don't push, your, push your brush down. Um, but if you don't have the strength... To keep that up, that floating motion, if it hurts your hand, um, you have health issues, or, you know, just that, doing that, that slowly makes something fall, fall asleep, you can actually paint it on like you would nail polish. 
you don't need a whole whole lot because um, we're going to be doing this in thin layers so just kind of really just want to wet your your brush with the gel just just a tiny little bit and then you're going to just do it like you would a top coat you're going to dab it on push back and then pull out you want to make sure you have an even layer on and you're staying away from those cuticles let it level a little bit and then cure and you can do that until the thickness is good for you just a quick 20 second cure and then we're going to do it again I'm just taking um, the stuff off the top of the aluminum here because it really is the perfect amount you, it's just a little tiny bit now on your last if you're doing just two coats this is where I flip my nail so that it, it levels into uh, it gives my, that nail a spine so to speak that whatever apex it needs it's going to get here remember to check your nail and then cure And then you should be, if you're going to pinch your nail, you should be paying attention for the heat spike. Because once that heat spike is done, um, then you can do your pinch. You can also pinch with just your fingers. But I notice sometimes when you have to do that the pinch doesn't come out even or you push one side of the nail up and one side of the nail in it it's just easier and more accurate to do it with a tool I think me personally Um, now we're going to top coat those last two nails. And the reason I top coat is not everything is non-yellowing. Unless specifically advertised, they can yellow. So putting a top coat on is the best way to to ensure, in my opinion, um, that your nails always stay clean looking. Because uh, you can just take that top coat off and then repaint it on and the gel underneath is fine. You don't have to take that nail all the, you know, halfway down or all the way down and then reapply hard gel. You can just repaint. So let me know if there's anything I missed um, or anything you would like for me to nervously and awkwardly over explain. I will do my best. We're going to go ahead and wipe the nail off even though it's a no wipe top coat. I still, in case you missed a spot or didn't cap the edges, just get rid of that sticky layer. There we go. Um, now if you want to file them and shake them. Uh, now would be the time to do it <clears throat> if you didn't apply a top coat or if you're happy with the way they turned out and you've checked your light line. Ah, there we go. See, and this nail. 
you can see my light line goes really weird. But in the rest of the nail, straight up, straight down. Check your light line. You can flash your phone on it. You can um, hold it up to the light until you get a reflection. See that? That nail's funky. And I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm, I'm okay with it because it's just holding my nails together until I put my next set on. So it's all going to get filed off anyway. Go ahead and close this up. So thanks for bearing with me on this one. Thanks for bearing with me on the first one. Um, as time goes on and with constructive criticism, I will improve. Um, just right now, I'm hopeless. So, <laughs> so that's that. In our next video, we're not really going to be doing anything. Um, we're actually going to be going over some of the tools you might want to have for nail application. So that's going to be tips, dual forms, and uh, a couple different types of forms. And then... Um, different nail bits that you might want to use um, for filing your nails when you're done with application um, or during application if you messed up and you want to take it off so we're going to be going over different bits and we're also going to be going over nail brushes um, there's going to be one, two, three, five different sizes of nail brushes starting at eight, ending at 16. And that is that, I believe. Um, so, yeah, if you want to go over those things, please join me. And I hope to see you next time. Remember, constructive, constructive criticism is always, always welcome. Um, I'm just hoping to help one person, if it, if any, at all, um, because not everybody learns or follows um, the way somebody else does. So, I hope to see you next time. Uh, thanks.